Mahito is a cursed spirit beyond most characters in the series. And when you think about it, not many cursed spirits can say that. His versatility, personality, abilities, and mindset are all traits that always allow Mahito to be an extremely threatening character to majority of the cast. In a way, I always like to consider Mahito to be Kid Buu, while Jogo was Super Buu. Because Jogo was more so a traditional fighter, and he was more dangerous than Mahito in terms of raw power. But Mahito was always comparable to Jogo because not of raw power, but Mahito was just overall more dangerous and due to his fighting style and his abilities, he was just always more of a trickster and more annoying for characters to deal with. For example, Jogo could just incinerate his opponents and that's all he'd do, whereas Mahito would just toy with his opponents, screw around, get stronger as the fight goes, all the extra stuff that he quite frankly doesn't need to be doing. But let's be honest, had Yuji and Sukuna not been present during the Shibuya incident, Mahito more than likely would have slaughtered every character present until Yuki had arrived. And with his aptitude for battle and his current strength, you can even make a case for him giving Yuki some trouble. All in all, it's very telling that the character in the story that had to stop Mahito was the King of Curses himself, Ryomen Sukuna. But if we're going to talk about Mahito, let's start from his foundation. What exactly made Mahito such a threat to the cast and beyond a normal shonen antagonist? I think first we can start off with the personality and the mindset that Mahito inhabits. Mahito considers himself to be human, hatred, and carnage, having no empathy for the lives he steals and barely any for his own. The primary goal of the cursed spirit is to eventually create a world where cursed spirits reign supreme over humans and he plans to do this by any means necessary. But this obsession is what allowed Mahito to become a being that's beyond all cursed spirits. So Kuna once even saying to Jogo, humans flocking together, curses flocking together, pairing themselves to those around them leads to weakness and stunts their growth. You should have burnt everything you desired to a cinder without thinking. To reach the heights of Satoru Gojo, you're not worried about the future or identity but you lack the hunger to take hold of your desires. What Sukuna is telling Jogo in this conversation is that Jogo did not focus on his goal. He wasn't as single-minded and obsessed as his goal as much as his strongest were obsessed with their goals. Let's think about it. Gojo's the strongest because of his obsession with being the strongest. Sukuna is a walking disaster because the only thing he thinks about is battling, conquering, and who's strong and who's weak. Sugar Ghetto was a special grade sorcerer because he developed himself enough to become a sorcerer capable of killing every non-sorcerer in the world. All of these characters have the same drive and obsession with their goals. Another character that can be added onto this list is Mahito. As Mahito focused on nothing but making humans miserable and crushing them. Even when fighting Yuji, he'd always prioritize just breaking Yuji mentally and screwing with him rather than actually defeating him first. Another aspect of Mahito's personality that allowed him to become such a threat was his composure in battle. There are not many times when Mahito would break his composure in battle, but when he does, what comes out of him is immense joy. Mahito's composure and optimism during fighting are only part of what always allowed him to remain in control of a battle. As Mahito has always been able to come up with a counter to an opponent or a creative way to defeat them. For example, when he had Nobara chase his clone and swapping out with it in order to bait Nobara into a direct blow of idle transfiguration, and also Mahito picking up the 0.2 domain expansion against Yuji and Toto the moment he was backed into a corner. Mahito's composure under pressure is what has always allowed him to be so difficult to kill, as he's always been able to come up with an answer or survival tactic in any situation that may require it. But what's even more dangerous than Mahito's mental fortitude and mindset is his ability, Idle Transfiguration. Idle Transfiguration being an ability that allows the user to reshape the soul of themselves or anyone they physically touch. The shape of the body is dependent on the shape of the soul, so if the soul is distorted, so too is the body. If Maito is able to land a touch on most characters in the series, he has the ability to completely turn them into something that is a human, essentially taking your life. The only way to counter or stop this ability is to either have two souls within you with the innate soul having the ability to defeat Mahito in the first place such as Sukuna or to be able to have a domain expansion such as Hakari or Yuta Kotsu that can nullify the technique. 
Reverse Curse Technique cannot counter or heal the effects of Idol Transfiguration since Mahito rewrites the soul to be in the shape that he wants it to be in. So the body will recognize whatever shape the soul is in to be its natural form. Thus, Reverse Curse Technique won't be able to heal anything as the body won't recognize anything that needs to be healed. But couple this dangerous ability with his imagination and he becomes much more threatening. As when faced against his hard counter Yuji Itadori, Mahito can't use his usual tactic of just transfiguring the soul to get an instant win. He's developed multiple other abilities that will gain him increased mobility and land direct blows, punches, and kicks very easily against him instead. And you have to think about it, right? Against any other character that isn't Yuji or somebody with two souls inside of them that has a stronger innate soul than Mahito, Mahito can resort to these tricks against them using Ayo Transfiguration on their soul and instantly defeat them instead of just punching and kicking them around like Yuji. And that's not even where Mahito's imagination with his ability ends. From creating weapons and enlarging his body or using an ability such as soul multiplicity, Mahito is able to merge two souls together that he's claimed and due to the reaction that these two souls will have of rejecting their merge, he can send an overwhelming amount of transfigured humans towards his opponent, meanwhile shaping this ball of mutation in any way that he'd like it to be it. Mahito would always be able to very easily pressure any opponent and land an instant killing touch, thus winning the battle very easily. With his idol transfiguration, Mahito is also able to regenerate much easier and more efficiently than the reverse curse technique could ever heal Sorcerer, as he's manipulating his soul rather than healing the body, and most characters cannot even directly damage the soul. Last but not least, when Mahito is pushed to the break, he can use the instant spirit body of distorted killing. Just to make this quick, this was an ability that Mahito discovered when Yuji pushed him to the brink of death, having an awakening that parallels Satoru Gojo's when faced against Toji Zeni. Mahito seems to look a lot like Hanami in this form, but that's not where the similarities end. Mahito in this form has a durability so immense and overwhelming that Yuji Itadori himself cannot keep up with it, stating that damaging Mahito without a black flash is not possible for him. Mind you, a much weaker Yuji was able to do serious damage to both Hanami and Choso with his normal punches alone. Mahito's physical prowess here is just simply impressive, and would certainly allow him to keep up with some of the Kulin Game characters. It can be noted here that Mahito can activate this form at will, and can still transfigure the souls of other people when he's in this form, but just not his own soul, as that's something he can only do in his base. But honestly, I think Mahito would only access his form as a last resort, as again, changing his body and his soul is part of his integral fighting style and it also allows him to recover very quickly, he wouldn't be able to do that in his transformation, so I think if he needs to keep up with somebody's stats, that's the only time he'd use his transformation. Again, if Yuji had not had Sukuna within him, or lost against Mahito in their final battle, Mahito would have annihilated everybody up until Yuki Sukuma arrived. Mahito being able to completely dominate and overwhelm a 15 finger Yuji going all out would be enough for him to enter the calling game and fight against most characters. Mostly because of his insanely dangerous growth rate within battle and the fact that Mahito can transfigure souls in a transformation that allowed him to completely ragdoll a 15 finger Yuji Itadori. Mahito strength wise was much more than people give him credit for and Sukuna would have lost his title in 30 business days had he not been the one to primarily put Mahito down. That wraps up most I have to say about Mahito's overall strength and power, but as for his purpose in the story, I believe that he served the story enough and was an amazing antagonist. The fact that a character like Mahito could have multiple pathways available to him for the author, and would still be a satisfying character to enjoy no matter what Gegakatami decided to do with him, is very telling of the quality of Gegakatami's work in this character. I believe that in hindsight, Mahito had to be put down early unless he was going to become the main antagonist because his growth rate was simply too dangerous for the story. And he also had the obsession of a special grade sorcerer, so I do believe that's the main reason why Gage Akatami decided to remove Mahito from the story. And is now replacing him with whatever curse comes out of Kenjaku's calling game plan as a curse born of something as brutal as a killing game full of human beings should produce something similar to Mahito, who was the curse born from humanity. All in all, that just about wraps up my thoughts and my analysis 
in my power scaling sort of on Mahito. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, leaving a subscription, and even a comment. Thank you for any of those, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.